Hey, what's going on? My name is Brian Henninger. I'm a professional dancer here in New York City. Um, and I also write an industry insider blog for Flygout on WordPress. Uh, and today I'm here to answer a question that I got asked about something regarding the industry and more specifically taking class. Um, so I'm gonna read the question first and then I'm gonna kind of answer it in three different parts. So the question is, I'd like to know how to recognize when a class is a good one that is actually contributing to your growth. I'm familiar with the if you're feeling uncomfortable, you're growing principle, but I'm talking about the terms of actually teaching. Oftentimes the popularity of a class will motivate me to try it, but then it seems like someone who is teaching the class is splattered in their teaching tactics and doesn't quite know exactly the content that they're giving us. Or they'll teach so much content that when we hear the music, uh, it makes it hard to match the movement to the music because I'm still struggling to remember what the movement actually is. Um, and then on the other side of that, sometimes it seems like it's an hour and a half of just inspirational industry talk and not a lot of actual content that we're learning. And then the second part of the question is, uh, often the teachers at BDC, uh, Broadway Dance Center, are often away, uh, the teachers I enjoy uh, taking. So how do we continue quality training when the people we most respect in the industry have slots they teach but are also working themselves? Uh, is this something that I should just power through? Is this just how it is? Um, and how do I tell if the class I'm taking is really actually contributing to my growth? So, first of all, thank you so much for the question. It's a great question. Um, and I'm going to cover it in a couple different parts. First, your training as a dancer and your growth really comes down to you at the end of the day. It starts with you, it starts with your mentality, it starts with how you approach your training, and it starts with what you think about uh, in your head. Because we all know that our thoughts are things, and what you focus on the most tends to actually happen in your life. So if you feel like the classes you're taking, and you focus on the fact the classes you're taking aren't benefiting you, or you're always overthinking whether they are or aren't, you're probably getting in the way of your own growth in a certain way, just right there. Um, and then the second part of your question is, you know, how do I deal with a class where the teacher throws so much content at us that when he starts the music, I'm still trying to catch up and I'm still trying to remember what I'm learning. And that's more of an issue of your particular level and where you are in your training. Because, you know, if you're taking an intermediate advanced class, um, sometimes they're going to throw a lot at you. Those classes are really for dancers who are pre-professional or professional working dancers and trying to keep up their audition technique. And at auditions, we get a lot of content thrown at us, a lot of eight counts, and you got to be able to pick it up immediately and perform it. So that's probably something that you just should continue to work on, continue to work on your pickup and your ability to retain choreography and ability to learn it as fast as possible. Um, but on the other side of that, sometimes you'll take a class where the teacher might not be as experienced as they should be to be teaching that class and oftentimes it's almost like they're teaching you a lot of eight counts but there's no substance there. And that kind of comes back to your original question, which is how to tell if a class is actually benefiting me and how to find teachers who really um, are going to teach you what you really want to learn and what you or help you progress in the way that you want to progress as a dancer. So the first thing you need to do to do that is be clear. Be clear about where you want to go in dance, where you want to be, uh, what you want to accomplish, what type of talents and skills you want to learn. Um, and let your class taking, let the teachers you decide to take class from reflect that. Because if you're sure about where you want to go as a dancer and you're sure about how you want to progress, then that's naturally going to lead you to the right teachers that are going to take you there. Also, it's a lot about being receptive to energies and understanding, you know, what type of a person a teacher is. A lot of different students aren't going to gel and mesh well with certain teachers. you got to find the teachers that are really going to help you and cultivate your talent in the best possible way. Obviously, there's a huge part of training that is, like you said, just about feeling uncomfortable and putting yourself out of your comfort zone and learning different types of movement. And that's a huge part of it as well. Um, but it's not everything. And obviously you're gonna always grow and benefit from a class where you feel crazy and you feel like you're fighting and you've gotta fight through the choreography to get it. That's always a good learning experience. But it's also really important in this industry to build strong relationships and strong networks. And part of that is finding teachers that you vibe with, that you gel with, that you're friendly with, that you feel like have your best interests at heart as well. And that really starts with you. It's not all about the teacher. It's about what energy you put out in class and whether after class you're asking for critiques, you're asking for advice, um, and you're just really engaged and hands-on in your own training. 
So to answer your original question, how to tell if a class is good or contributing to your growth, it's really just all about your mentality and the way you present yourself in class. Because if you do that, if you have the right mentality and you're focused on your growth and you're sure about where you want to go as a dancer, then you're automatically going to make the right decisions of whose class to take. Um, and then honestly like over time we all start taking as much class as we possibly can and we try to take as many different styles as we can but over time we kind of learn you know who are the best teachers for us um, and the best teacher for you might not necessarily be the best teacher for me and that's fine that's the beautiful thing about dance um, but it's important to always be thinking about that and kind of be questioning and kind of be be hands-on in your approach as to whose class you're going to take and be clear to why you're taking their class because it's not a good enough reason to take someone's class of their choreography is hot and it's dope because there's a lot of people whose choreography is hot and is dope but they're not very good teachers um, so it's important to experience a lot of different classes and kind of find out for yourself who's going to benefit you the most and then as far as your question as to what to do when your favorite teachers are away and they have subs and stuff you know, sometimes taking a sub for a teacher that you normally love can be one of the best experiences you've ever had because you get so in the realm of taking the same person's class over and over again that when you get a chance to do something different, and oftentimes subs are up-and-coming teachers, um, you can experience a new energy, a younger energy, a different energy, and a lot of times there are really, really great teachers in the whole substitute realm um, that are just getting their starts and they have a lot to give. So I would encourage you to keep taking subclasses when the teachers that you normally take are out um, and keep your training up. And there's so many things you can do on your own too. I mean, you can go to the gym, you can work on your fitness, you can do yoga, you can cross train, you can do so many different things. You can choreograph, you can start to get into who you are as an artist and who you are as a dancer. So it's not always just about taking class, taking class, taking class, taking class. I mean, that's the most important thing is your training. But anytime you're dancing and anytime you're pushing yourself artistically, you're training and you're progressing as well. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and I think I'm going to be doing more of these coming up because, you know, writing the blog is great, but any chance that I have to interact kind of more with you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis via comments or questions that you guys might have is super cool and I really want to, you know, do that more. So if you have a question about anything industry related, um, either in New York or LA, in regards to specifically being a commercial dancer, um, I would encourage you guys to post a question in the comment section below or send me a message on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash bstylesdance, that's B-S-T-Y-L-E-S-D-A-N-C-E, -E, all one word. Um, and then on Facebook, you can find me uh, just by my name, which is also provided in the description box below. And then I'm also going to put a link to the industry blog I write for, which is flygal.wordpress.com. That's F-L-Y-G-Y-A-L.wordpress.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description box below as well. So we'll see you guys soon.